Welcome in. The Eric St. Show podcast, the daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the Impact Power Sports Studio. Okay, look, I, I have to explain to you. I'm still getting the timing down and going from radio day to podcast day. And I'm close. I'm really close to where the show ends, radio show ends, and then boom, podcast day begins and uh, all is well. And then that's it. You know, we're off and running. There is no reason why I can't finish the podcast and then be ready to go right at 10. But I failed today. There's it's, it's failure after failure, which helps me to be better. You can see me like reaching around for knobs and stuff because I'm, a, I'm a still experiencing all sorts of moments where I have to get used to shit. But the dogs are here. I'm here. I'm queer. Ryan says you were clipping a bit. Okay, can't have that. I think we're good now. Check. Hello. Hello. Check. All right. I'm to the point now where in the 9 a.m. hour, there's a few things that have to happen. A, dogs go outside. So how, what that works on my, how that works on my end is I'll play like three songs in a row and I'll have the software set on automatic. And then I got, that gives, buys me like 12 minutes. Dogs go potty. Do my last little segment before the commercial break at about 950. That leads right up to D Snyder's house of hair cut. And then get right back in here. Johnny wanted to hear a song by Tool. Yesterday, he gave me a shitbox song by Chevelle called The Red, which is like their most popular song. It's been played like 300, uh, 300 million times on Spotify. And, and uh, every single one of those times, uh, it, it was just as shitty as the last. But I played it. I will say that that song Sober by Tool, that's like that big hit off that album. That song sucks. I hate that fucking band. But Q100 is not built on only playing songs that I like. I would have played it. Honest to God, I would have played it. Even though you like shitty music, I will play it. I'm not going to avoid your songs just because I don't like them. I know a lot of people like these bands. A lot of people love Tool. I will absolutely play a song by Tool. Kenny says The Red is literally the worst song by Chevelle, though. Well, okay, look. All he said was Chevelle. He didn't give me any other info other than play Chevelle. And all I did was went to their most popular song. So I don't think it's literally their worst song, though. I would say it's their most popular song. I even went and listened to a couple of the other songs. And I... I that band sucks. It, no matter what I hear by Chevelle, it's going to suck. So you can't expect me to just pick another song when they all suck. If you're going to give me a song request on Q100, you got to give me a song, uh, a band, and a song title. So when you say play Chevelle, well, okay, I'll play Chevelle. I did my job. And then when it comes to Tool, uh, pick a song. I think I think you said, uh, I don't know, what's the one called? Uh, stink Eye or Stink stink Guy or Stinky Man or Stinky. Something about Stink. I'm like what a, what a fucked up band. They got a, they got a song called Sting or Stink. Stink fist. Maureen wanted the gin blossoms. Now, 
These are all the songs I played today. These are all the suggestions, this list. It included um, Bakersfield by Social Distortion. Great band. Hard to believe they've been around like 45 years. That was Mike. Stone Cold Crazy by Queen was the last song I played by, uh, by Bob. Waiting for the Sun, audience member up north named Mike. Song by Sugarloaf was very good. Don't call us, we'll call you. The Dead Weather. Impossible Winter. Excellent song. Gravity's Gone by Drive-By Truckers. I love that song too. The Girl I Love has long black curly hair by Led Zeppelin. Oh, fucking great song. I played a Wayland song called Water from their new album. Tim requested that one. Our Tim. Zeke's dad. Uh, Nick requested Jared James Nichols, Easy Come, Easy Go. That was good. I played an Avenged Sevenfold song called So Far Away. A little softer song by Avenged Sevenfold. Johnny B. Zero writes, this keeps freezing up on me. Well, it's you, not me, because I've got uh, nearly one gig of speed. Well, that's my download speed. My upload speed is like 50 gigs. Bat, uh, Big Wreck. I played a band called The Ugly Kings. Never heard of them. Played them. Bad Touch. That is uh, Bad Touch and Molly Marriott. A lot of requests. So many that, and so many others came in that I just couldn't get to them, including the Gin Blossoms. And I don't, again, I don't know any other Gin Blossoms songs. So I think we need to get out of the habit of saying, play Gin Blossoms or play Chevelle. Because I don't know any other song. You got to pick a song. Now, let me just say, Hey, Jealousy. I I would play Hey, Jealousy again. This is all about, it's not up to me, it's up to the audience to build that radio station. That's what they hang their hat on. And the day that I start not playing your shit, it's the day that I'm not doing my job. So I want you to know that whenever you guys request songs that I hate and I play them, a little part of me dies. Nick says, you got to abide by the tool rule. Kenny says, I submitted an entire playlist when you started on the night show and you shit all over the entire thing, even though it had plenty of actual good tunes on it. So yeah, I have no suggestions. Well, uh, thanks for the update. Cool. Why don't you complain more? That's a point for you. Uh, Ben says, that's because you request no good tunes for the tune man. I would like to see that list again. If you still have that shit list of yours. I, I don't even... I think I just deleted it. Um, somebody requested Cemetery Gates by Pantera. Now, I have never heard that song in my life. Uh, Kenny, uh, uh, send your stupid list. I'd like to take a look at it. Johnny B. Zero announces his departure. He says, I'll talk to you all later. I have a shit connection. Awesome job, Easy. Loving the new show. Found a lot of good music so far. The best thing about Q100 is, if you don't know it, it's still interesting to me. I love the fact that you request Tool and Chevelle. I know that there are audience members that like it. Again, not my job to only play music that I like. My job is to play the audience's suggestions and try to do a show uh, that's entertaining. Okay? Maureen says, Mrs. Rita is another song by the Gin Blossoms. I'm going to write that down. 
for tomorrow. There are some that I review. Like uh, there was somebody suggested a song, and I'll listen to it for a short amount of time, like five, ten seconds. And if it doesn't strike me as just way off the wall and just I can't hang, I'll play it. That's what the station was built on. How much Nirvana have you played? I don't think I've played a Nirvana song. All right. Kenny emailed his link. I'm curious as to what he, uh, what he had sent me. He, re- he renamed it Eric Zane Hates This Playlist. It was funny. Staring at the Sun by Smile. Don't know it. Hunger Strike, Temple of the Dog. Excellent song. Phaser by Quicksand. Don't know it. Crazy Love by Grun Truck. Don't know it. Wood, Alice in Chains. Um, popular song, but it's um it's a it's a horrible song. With I would could should good kill you whoever that singer is in the band Alice in Chains when he's doing that style it's it's just terrible when he actually sings whatever that guy's name is he croaked um Lane Staley like uh, the song no excuses he sings that's a that's a good song Wood is not a good song. It's a bad song. But people seem to like it. If I Were a Killer by Galactic Cowboys. Don't know it. Animal, Pearl Jam. I know that song. Uh, I got a Soul Asylum song called Promise is Broken. I Don't Know Anything by Mad Season. The World I Know, Collective Soul. Ugh. Rusty Cage, Soundgarden. A lot of uh, 90s grunge going on here. Seattle. Kenny loves his Seattle and his West Coast with Sublime, Stone Temple Pilots. We got the Red Hot. This isn't a bad list. Um, Sabotage, Beastie Boys, Everlong, Foo Fighters. This is very, uh, very popular list. I get the impression that you kind of wanted to like uh, win me over by playing songs that you thought I would like. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. I was probably just busting your balls because it's fun to bust your balls. That's like my favorite pastime is busting your balls. But on that list, that Allison Chain song, Wood, it just stinks. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kenny told someone, fuck you. Who are you telling fuck you to? Dude, fuck you. Seriously, wow. Who's he, who's he mad at now? What happened? To me, what did I do? All I said that, that was that song, Wood, is a, is a bad song. And that guy, when he when he's actually sings, it sounds, it sounds excellent. But he's, he doesn't even sing that song. He just kind of uh, drones on and on. It's a, it's a horrible sound. It's just my opinion. My God. You don't need to get all uh, butthurt about it. Jesus. I think, I think today's a bad day for you. Anyway. If you want to get a request on that show, I advise you to get up early because they fill up fast. Kenny says, or Ben Glaze says that Lane Staley sings the song Wood better now. Yeah, like if you were to dig up his body and, um, you know, jam a microphone into his uh, thorax cavity that's rotting away, the sound of the worms eating his bones would sound better than his singing the song Wood. That would be more pleasant to the ears than that song. It's quite a visual there. 
Uh, add this to the list of things that you will not hear on the Insane Asylum Q100 Michigan with Eric Zane. Uh, Amy says that Kenny should be in a good mood. He finally pooped. I, I guess he had given an update to the crowd. Okay. All right. Um, that's my fill of Kenny for the day. I, I say that, uh, that that's going to do it on the Kenny files. You can never have... you. There is a finite amount of Kenny that we can handle. And, and we're at it. We are at the, the, uh, satura- the saturation point right now. So that concludes the Kenny broadcast day on the Eric Zane Show podcast. I need to hear from you with regard to Meathead. Dad will be joining me in mere, mo- in mere moments for Dear Meathead. Officially, I have zero questions for Dear Meathead. None. I don't have a one. So... Uh, if you have a question for dad on dear meathead, head over to your email and send me a uh, question. Eric at Eric Zane Uh, yeah, I'm even looking at the Facebook post with the picture of, uh, all of us together and, uh, no, not a one, no questions. So. That would, be, that would make my life easier if you have anything going on in your world that you want to share with me or share with dad or ask him. Uh, that would be um, that would be cool. So send it along, eric at ericzaneshow.com. Stevie says you got to ask him about his party. What was his favorite thing about it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course. That's probably where we'll start. So send along a question, eric at ericzaneshow.com. For you folks on Facebook, X, and YouTube, though, it's uh, time to call it a day for you. If you want the rest of the show, I will have it available. It is available right now. It's rolling right now. It's waiting for you to um, check it out on Twitch. So download the Twitch app and then search Eric Zane Live. That's how you do that. Or go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live and uh, watch the rest of the show that way. You can also listen to the audio podcast wherever you download shows. Just search it out and uh, subscribe, rate, and review. I prefer Apple Podcasts. And then my Patreon. Oh, boy. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. This week, it is a big fraud Saturday. I'll be teaming up with Ben Glaze for Who Are These Zanes? We are going back to, um, for sure, the year 2002. Uh, EZ, and uh, you're going to love that. Also, Saturday, we will do the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. That all goes on on Patreon. Uh, You can get lost going down the rabbit hole on Patreon with all the shows on there. Contrary to popular belief, people are like, the only thing EZ can do is talk about our favorite radio show. It's like, you're full of shit, you fucking idiot. Uh, But there is plenty of content on there, including who are these Zanes? Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And yes, we do review uh, free beer and hot wing shows uh, every other week for about 45 minutes of the 25 hours of programming I put up between my free podcast and, uh, and my Patreon. 45 minutes every two weeks dedicated to our pals, the free beer and hot wing show. All right. So. That's where I'll leave it for you folks that are watching on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Have a great day. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EZ. EV, damn it. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. The open and live stream of today's show brought to you by my Vouch Store. Check out the products for sale by small businesses that have partnered up with your pal EZ. Go to Vouch. Is it vouch.com slash easy? How did I forget that? Oh my God, it's embarrassing. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. And check out the products that are for sale there right now. You got the percussion massagers, the small one and the big one, the camp craft cocktails, the pet food, the uh, pet treats, the coffee, and the toothbrush. 
I had the Michigan and Michigan State merchandise. I don't know what happened there. They've just vanished. Go to my Vouch store and shop. The goal, three products sold in the month of March. We had two sold in the month of February, hoping for three in March. Nikki says my dog is obsessed with the yak sticks from there. Thank you, Nikki. Patrick says my son wrote him a birthday card with a bunch of questions and he answered some of them. Very cool. What are you talking about? You got a letter from my dad in the mail? (gasps) Oh my God. Patrick got a letter from my dad in the mail. He says it was a thank you card. My son wrote him a birthday card with a bunch of questions and he answered some of them. Very cool. Oh my God. That's incredible. I'm so happy that happened. The question Maureen has for uh, Joanne is in that picture that I just showed you. Joanne has a t-shirt that says Mo Shizzle. 88-year-old woman wearing a Mo Shizzle shirt. So cool. All right. I also want to say thank you to Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersports.com. You can find them in Rockford, Michigan. They specialize in uh, amazing, fun power equipment like UTVs, ATVs, e-bikes, motorcycles. They've got it all. Yamaha golf carts. The selection is vast. The service department runs deep. They can help you with anything you need in case you get in the weeds, either with your current gear that you have, or if you buy something that requires a little bit of maintenance, they have it all at Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersportsmi.com in Rockford, Michigan. Go see them and mention me. You got Tag Accounting, the world famous Tax Hobbit. Waiting to hear from you. 616-301-9516. He's an absolute legend. He'll make your life easier. You uh, still have plenty of time to schedule. If you reach out to the Tax Hobbit today, 616-301-9516. Also, the Grand Rapids Gold online at grandrapidsgold.com. Get tickets for the next home game. There are two remaining Come see the Grand Rapids Gold G League Basketball at Van Andel Arena. GrandRapidsGold.com. Next game is uh, Thursday of next week, I believe. Let me just double check that. Important because the Thursday games, $2 beers, $2 dogs. That is Thursday the 28th. Get tickets for that one for the $2 beers, $2 dogs. Good time with your Grand Rapids Gold. Uh it was kind of a disaster today for EZ when I started the radio show. Yesterday, I talked to you about how, um, so to my left is this little control board with a few knobs on it. One of them controls volume. And um, the way we start the morning show on Q100 is like uh, a news broadcast will play literally on their end. And then um, there's some type of thing that happens with the computers that makes me in charge on my end. So then my show is off and running and um, I'm sending a signal to them. All right. Yesterday I talked to you about it, how I, um, my mic could be heard. Say, Hey, it's Eric Zane. And then I, I hit a song. Let's say it's wood by Allison chains. I hit it and the sound did not leave my house to be sent instantaneously across the state via the internet to them and everything all shits the shit started hitting the fan and for several minutes we're trying to figure it out it turns out that uh, i didn't have a volume button uh a volume uh, knob turned up so that was terribly embarrassing it was a complete disaster uh the guy that i'm talking to jj he's very patient he goes okay all right shake it off no big deal today also a catastrophe same damn thing. Not the volume, though. Uh, a button that was not supposed to be pushed was pushed. And it was an absolute carbon copy of the day before. Where 
except not even my microphone was working. Nothing was working. I started talking and uh, famous words that I seem to say now for two days in a row are, well, everything's the same on my end. Everything's good on my end. And and I can tell that the poor guy that is on the other end, I'm talking to him. He's on the phone to make, making sure that and he goes, yeah, we're, we're not hearing anything. Are, are you sure everything's the way it's supposed to be? I go, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good, man. It is so perfect. Everything on my end is perfect. And um, for time's sake, I can't sit here and say for 20 minutes the same thing because that's what I did today. For 20 minutes, I was going, yeah, it's all good. Everything's working. So he's go- he's in emergency mode. There is something on the air, but it's it's uh, it's not this show. It's, it's uh, kind of like a backup system that they have. And they, and they probably have it labeled with uh, hit this program or have this ready when Eric does the show because he's a goddamn fool. And for fuck's sake, it was such a bummer. And um, then finally, I took a look at my little control board and I hit one button and immediately everything starts to work the way it's supposed to. 20 minutes. I sat here with my dick in my hand while the poor people from Q100 are wondering what the hell have they gotten themselves into. So after that, not a hitch. Everything went great. There was one time when I was playing a song off of uh, my iPad here. And um, it's a four and a half minute song. And I ran downstairs to grab a cup to start my cup of coffee and I was going to come upstairs while it was finishing and uh I got sidetracked and sure enough I come in here and it's silence a goddamn song is finished there's nothing I'm like oh god how long has this been going on bad feeling that's that nightmare fuel I'm t- I've told you about so bad god damn it um so as I wrap up the show today JJ the guy at the radio station he goes okay tomorrow let's test everything at 5 30 all right to make sure you're we're, we're getting sound make sure and i go yes yes you're right maureen says give yourself some grace it's a learning process it's only your third day and you won't let that happen again probably not that long that's for sure uh now two separate incidents caused um a real panic a real panic, but, um, I am actually giving myself grace. I'm just kind of beating myself up on here, but, um, it really is fantastic when you think about it, what is going on. Um, I'm also not, I mean, on the podcast, I'm talking about the ins and outs and how this all works, but, um, the people who listen every day there, they have no idea that I'm not there. And obviously I'm not couching it here. I didn't plan on it. They find out, they find out. It's not the end of the world. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring in dad in just a second here, but I got to go get something to drink because I've got some severe cotton mouth going on. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
Excuse me. Um, so here in uh, West Michigan, one of the water main, what well, one of the water mains broke, and when that happens, bacteria can be introduced to the water lines. So they have a uh, boil water advisory. Of course, the water pressure is affected to a vast amount of people in the area. But as of Sunday, they were like, boil your uh, boil your water before you drink it. If it's coming out of the tap, you know, um, yeah, anything that goes in your mouth, be very, very, don't, don't drink it unless it's boiled. If you shower, try not to ingest it in any way. Don't give it to the dogs. Only consume boiled water. So people are like, okay. And one of the things I was curious about is because the city is doing a uh, free water giveaway. So you drive to a certain spot and they're showing video footage of it. And there's like one mile of cars. And you pull up and they put the water in your car. And they're only giving away, each car can only get one 24 pack of water. So each of those bottles are like 10 ounces. That's obviously 240 ounces of water to drink. And, uh, I think that costs about $2.50. What kind of asshole would wait in line for any longer than like three minutes to get water? So basically, you're waiting in your car. You're, you're slowly creeping ahead. Takes you three hours and five gallons of gas to get 240 ounces of water. What a bunch of fucking morons. Wouldn't it be easier just to fill up a pot of water and boil it and then set it off to the side and then it cools and then you drink it? No, let's get in the car and wait in the car for uh, four days in a row and get a free uh, 24 pack of water that is so stupid people are dumb oh yeah we got you covered we've got your water yeah but do you have my time asshole so ridiculous how come Michigan always has fucked up water Cole asks. Well, you're talking about two different issues. You're, you're referencing Flint. That was a that was a different issue. This is a water main break. It's been repaired, and they tested the water, and the bacteria is is not there. But yeah, Chris says what I said: boil the water. God damn it! All right. It's time to bring in dad for dear meathead. Um, I hope for God's sake, we got some questions. Otherwise this is going to be short. He's not nearly as sharp. He's diminished. His brain is diminishing fast. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Never better. How are you dad? All right. It is, uh, it's so good to have you guys. I need to talk to you about, uh, you got a lot of cards for your birthday, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Everywhere. Was... South Carolina, Lansing, uh, Jamison. <laughs> I don't even know how they know me. Well, I, th- I think you're pretty famous, you two. Oh, my God. I mean, I had talked on the podcast that, uh, that there was a big birthday party, and they, they went ahead and got a hold of your address and said, we, we love Meathead and Joanne so much, we need to send them cards. They did. They did. They got a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much. What? That's just awesome. I can't believe this. 
Yeah, Dad. Uh, it, it, you guys are uh, very, very special to a lot of people. Wow. It's just super, super. I just love them. They're wonderful people. Yeah, Dad, for sure. And they feel the same way about you guys. Uh, I, I think uh, one, of the, one of the folks here indicated that um, you guys had sent a thank you note back. Yeah, that was to uh, Patrick and Michael. Yeah, Patrick. I I know Patrick and his little his son. I think asked you guys a month, asked some questions and and you had answered them and uh, yeah, all all really really fun. Oh, uh, these good good people. This is wonderful. This has been just one one hell of a surprise. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about that uh, that birthday party. Oh, which one? Well, the, the one at uh, the one that at uh, Stong's with the great big birthday cake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That cake was huge. Yeah. Huge, man. Wow, Dad. Uh, everybody together. That was that was something. You still? These people. Are yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Dad. It. Uh, now, did you get a bunch of? I, I know she got a bunch of presents and stuff like that. You feel you've, you are you happy with that? Got a lot of goodies. I'm telling you. You love the you. Hey, what's that? Your friend Linda. We didn't win any money. Oh, <laughs> a lot like scratch off lottery cards. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so that's adorable. Yeah, she's she's a big fan too. We had fun scratching it off, but we didn't win anything. So. Okay. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> oh man, this has been something. Uh, so that's 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 cool. Ninety years old now, Dad. Now you know Joanne is uh, what a year and a half, two years away. Is that is that when we can have another celebration, Joanne? She's eighty-eight. <laughs> okay, so less than two years, and the birthday is November, right? Yes. Yeah, and growing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, Tyler, he weighs in with a question because a lot of people are talking about, you know, longevity, living a long time. Uh, and you are starting to get to that age where people are looking at you like, wow, what's he doing? I gotta, I gotta do what he's doing because he's living such a long life. Uh, do you have any secrets for Tyler about living a long life? I don't know. Do I? Do I have any secrets? Well, what do you, what do you think? You know, Dad is it's it? My wife is my secret. You're. <laughs> she, you mean she uh, she keeps you going? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is a laugh, laughing woman uh -huh. of my life. A laughing woman of your life. That that's what keeps you going. Yeah. Of course, of course. Well, uh, happy, happy, happy. She does. She's uh, she's everything. Yeah, Dad. Uh, can't really argue with that. If you got someone special like that, so good. I, I have been one of the most luckiest men on earth with my wife. Do you think she feels the same way? I think so. <laughs> I I I believe so, Dad. I believe so. I believe that too. Uh, Chris writes, dear meathead, Eric, me, Eric has talked about when you would sell insurance yeah. and, and he says, it sounds like you were very good at it. He says, what is one? Good. Yeah. He said that you were very good at, uh, selling insurance according to me. Cause I often said that you were good at it. Um, he says, what is something that you learned when you were selling insurance that you think everyone should know? Well, well you just be honest with people. What? Everything has got to be said in the honest way, with our honesty. So you just uh, deal with them honestly and, uh, and, and everything will come back to you? Yes. That's great advice, you know? I yes. mean. I mean, a lot of people embellish their things. I didn't. I just did everything just the way it is, as it comes. 
Okay, so you never really lied to anybody uh, in your work. That's that's a darn good thing. That's why you were successful. Thank you, yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, good. Uh, let's see, Rob writes this. Rob is in New Jersey, Dad. He writes, Dear Meathead, I have a friend that's been having a problem going number two when they try to go to the bathroom what do yeah. you what do you do or what have you done in the past when you're constipated thanks and happy belated birthday rob so rob's friend lenny is having a hard time going number two take flaxseed what flaxseed take the flaxseed is that like a oil or is that just eating I, seeds no, no no it's a seed you can buy it at walmart anywhere flaxseed and you Sprinkle it on your food when you eat. Okay, so, and then, you know, it's pretty much has a natural effect on you, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, no, it's not for that, but it just cleans you out good. But <laughs> it's uh, a roughage. Okay, so it's like extra fiber, uh, fiber get, that, get that in there. I think drinking water helps, too, for, for, uh, for Lenny, Rob's pal Lenny, who's... Uh, Who's actually on the toilet as we speak, apparently. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Amy writes, Dear Meathead, what does a typical day look like for you? A difficult day? No. Uh, what, is, what is a normal day for you? Like, starting with... Okay. Get up in the morning. Work in the yard. Uh, work in the yard a little bit. Go visit uh, Pick up some uh, uh, stuff that the, the the wind brought it in. And, oh yeah. Uh, well, and then uh, occasionally my, my neighbor over there, uh, if he get, get up to be outside, we chit chat and you know. Boy, it sounds like you got the life. The what? It sounds like you have a great life. Yeah, I have a great life. And I sit on this big chair, watch some TV a little bit. Right. Right. And let, let it go, you know. There's nothing I can do to change anything. Well, that's all good. That sounds like fun. I mean, my God, I wish I could do that. That sounds very relaxing to me. So whatever you got, make the best of it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I think that's great advice. Um, all right. Now you talked about the yard and cleaning things up. If there's any wind that brought it in a- any, anything, are we talking about leaves or paper or I know we're getting springtime. I haven't so- done that yet. Yes, you have. You uh, have not a whole lot of it. Buckets of leaves. Yeah. Oh my God. You must have the cleanest place in the entire neighborhood. Oh, uh, terrible. We got, well, well, it's terrible until it gets cleaned up. But you got more leaves. <laughs> yeah, and then and more leaves who show up. So that passes time. Do you think maybe Joanne yeah, Joanne might take the leaves that you put in the garbage and she would dig them out and throw them back in the yard so you'd have something to do? <laughs> it gives you an exercise. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? These keep coming back. <laughs> well, hey, we, we think it's coming from somewhere else, a different part of the world, so it's new stuff. Yeah, I don't think it's coming from another part of the world. It's probably your next door neighbor. <laughs> probably so. Yeah, we got a, and that's a, that's another thing. We got such aw- awesome, awesome neighbors. Yeah, you are you know, blessed, and I know they take care of you. So when make, they cover my uh, problems and all that. Yeah, make hey. sure make sure you don't piss them off because they they like to take care of you, even the ones that don't oh, like you. Oh. I have no reason to create a problem with them. All right. Let me, let me see. Just uh, right there, uh, Johnny on the spot to help me out and all that. Just a great thing. Okay. Uh, I got an update on Lenny, the guy who's sitting on the toilet. Uh, he has something known as diverticulitis. Have you heard of that one? I've heard of it. Oh, but I- no flex seats for him. Yeah. yeah no f- so, seat. yeah. That that's a different. We're we're gonna have to go a different direction because flaxseed might might hurt Lenny, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm not sure what he's gonna do. 
Maybe, like, go up there with a pencil and try to bust it up. <laughs> I'll tell you, I am. The, I think I am the healthiest person on the world. In the world. Oh, I, I believe that. I'm looking forward to the uh, to your uh, to your 100th birthday. Oh my God, that would be something, eh? Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Well, all right, we got a lot of things to plan. We've got um, we're going to go up north uh, for Memorial Day. Yes, we'll all be up there, and then in June we've got the Father's Day shish kebab extravaganza at your house. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, this is just uh, one one barrel of fun. Yes, yes. All we do is party, just like the old days. Except <laughs> except we don't get drunk, you know? Yes. Thank God. Yes. Joanne says, says who? Well, yeah, Joanne Joanne still has a glass of wine here and there. I mean, I mean, absolutely. I'm sure she had a glass I, of wine or two I, at, at I the like party. Wine. It's you and I are the ones that me, you, and your son Jimmy. We don't drink. We can't. It it, it messes yeah. with us. It it's bad. Very very yeah. bad. We just go to a party. Thank God, you and myself and Jimmy, my brother, your son, all stopped uh, drinking because we, our lives would have been much shorter. And we and we would have been alone, you know. We would have been we would have been lonely. Sure, yeah. that's true. Okay. Hey, you've got to have your family. If you want to have your family, love every one of them, and you'll always have your family. Love it. That sounds to be the basis for all of your uh, your the 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 happiness in your life. So I'm I'm glad to hear that. Well. Okay, Dad, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, everybody is... Uh, hey. What's that? God bless you. Yeah, yeah, and of course. Talk, we'll talk to you on our next trip. Okay, I love you guys. Have a good one, Joanne. Love you too. Love you too, baby. Okay, see ya. Bye now. Bye-bye. There you go, dear meathead. Oh, boy, he's just adorable. That's what Chris writes. He says, this is too adorable. He goes, Chris writes, there you go. The key to a long life is a good, happy woman. Yeah. I mean, hot, really hard to argue with that, if you think about it. If you think about it. Um, really, really sweet. You just can't go wrong with my dad. Uh, thanks, guys, for the questions. That actually uh, moved things along uh, quite well. Yeah, Kenny, don't take the flax seed. That, that'll hurt. No more flax seed. No more seed for Kenny. Uh, take it easy, buddy. And, um, yeah, you might have to do a little uh, diet modification there or something. I don't know. Uh, okay. Dear Meathead, another Rip Roaring edition. Thank you so much. Thank you as well to uh, Mario, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Uh, number one all across the United States. And you can uh, utilize Mario no matter where you are uh, with that number, 231-332-6505. First time mortgage people, or if you've done this many times in the past, uh, think about Mario when it comes to that. 231-332-6505. Wouldn't it be nice to pay on your own home as opposed to rent uh, on someone else's home. If you can make a rent payment, you can get a mortgage for God's sake. Most of the time, two, three, one, three, three, two, sixty five, zero five. We've got paintball war. Number 24 coming up April 28th at TC paintball. Who's in we'll be outdoors. We'll be indoors. So much fun at TC paintball. Book your own event at tcpaintballgr.com. I'm looking forward to getting Rick on this week. I'm anxious to uh, uh, hear if he's had a chance to listen to Q100 um, and the and the show. And uh, so we'll be checking in with him, hopefully, on Friday. He is not here. He had been used to listening early on in the uh when the show started today, but now that we've changed it, changed the time, he might be uh, getting on with his day and not able to check us out. But uh, no problem, no problem. We'll check in with him.
coming up on Friday. So book an event at TC Paintball today. Online at tcpaintballgr.com. When it comes to insurance, the licensed independent insurance agent slash broker of choice, Frank Fuss. My Policy Shop Insurance. Schedule an appointment with Frank for just about anything. Life insurance, health care on the marketplace, Medicare. He's an expert in all these things. Setting up your social, <coughs> excuse me, social security. You can do that if you go to mypolicyshop.com. All right. Uh, we utilize Frank specifically for healthcare.gov. Uh, that's how we at the Eric Zane Show household uh, get our insurance. And Frank can help you. Maybe you uh, need that type of health care through the marketplace because you're in between jobs or your employer does not offer insurance or maybe you're self-employed. Frank can help you every step of the way. Reach out. My Policy Shop Insurance. Find them at buyinsurancehere.com. So when you go to buyinsurancehere.com, it's a form. You fill it out, and that gets you in the system. Before long, you've got a phone call with Frank, and you're uh, you're sniffing each other's butts. All right. Excellent. Um, I might be at Bosco's today. It depends. I haven't heard from Dougie yet. Poor Doug fell down the damn steps on Friday. God damn. And uh, so they said, easy, you're going to be able to work it all this week. I go, absolutely. You need me up. I'll, I'll, I'll cover for Doug, you know? And so I get the word yesterday. We have, I think we need you on Wednesday, but dad says he's coming in. Uh, we want him to heal up, but he's a stubborn old fool. It's like, what are you doing? We've got it. You know anybody like that who can't relax? Yeah, I know. That's me. If I ever get to a point where everything's done and I have nothing to do, that's the worst day ever for me. That is awful. Um, I prefer five directions. I'm moving. I'm doing five things at once. Chaos. It has to always be chaos. That's exciting to me. Every time that I like, okay, I'm going to put everything to bed and I'm just going to sit my ass down and I'm going to, I sit down and I'm like, this fucking sucks. God damn it. You got to see me one time up north. If I could get like in uh, one of those, uh, like, like a camera on me at all times when I'm up north, the amount of time that everybody is sitting around the fire, making popcorn, a baked potato, a pot of chili, having a good time, drinking, having a drink. And there I am in the background, in the woods, tromping around, picking up sticks. I'm my father. I am my dad. It's um, it's quite bizarre. I uh, I can't. And then when I sit down, I'm like, this is terrible. Ugh, so bad. <laughs> Rob writes, I'm calling Mario soon. You're gonna love him. Bob suggests Kenny eat chili mac and taco meals. Uh, Jimmy's here. Hi, Jimmy. Patrick writes, I'm the same way. I stay busy. I work constantly on the house just to stay busy. Chris mentions, uh, if you want to get bound up, eat uh, meals ready to eat. MREs. I used to get MREs from a friend of mine who had access to those. He's in the army and I fucking love those things. I mean, I have a kind of a, uh, I'm kind of gross. I'll eat just about anything, including ass. And, uh, when it comes to MREs, the idea that it's completely self-contained, it even has a heater to heat up the fucking food. 
You're like, how do, how do they have a heat? Well, it comes in a box, okay? You open it up, and uh, the rations. And let's say you get the Salisbury steak. You open it up, and it's in a piece of plastic. Well, there is a, uh, a bag that you heat up the food in. You put uh, water in the bag, like half a cup of water. And that activates the chemical reaction in the thing. And then the water very quickly gets hot from what's in the bag. And then you take the bag that has that has Salisbury steak in it and put it in that bag. And then the Salisbury steak in like two and a half minutes is warm, ready to eat. You got a warm meal. I love that. And then you're right. You don't shit for like a week after. Did doomsday prepper Eric never go away? I never did any doomsday prepping. There's a lot of talk about eating ass. Easy. Doesn't your nose get in the way when eating ass? Rob says, lesson learned as newly wed. The nose is a great clitoral stimulator. <laughs> Very sexy uh, level of talk here on the show today. God damn, you're going to make people uncomfortable. If I'm telling you you're going to make people uncomfortable, that's bad. Megan says, I heard that on Real Housewives of SLC, too. I don't, I don't know what that is. Salt Lake City. All right. Sounds like a great show. Um, last night at the basketball game, it was kind of funny because we were annoying one of the players uh, from, coincidentally, Salt Lake City. The Salt Lake City Stars are in town. And uh, a player on their team, first name is Micah, last name is potter and uh he scores the first time i go micah potter because you, you can't really get too excited about the other team scoring now if our team scores then you like really sell it but if they score you say micah potter you know you don't want to get you want to indicate that yeah he scored but we don't give a shit so i go micah potter and then it hits me and i go hogwarts and i hear laughter in the audience I go, all right, well, I'm going to do that again. And then so every time that guy scores a bucket, I, I, I reference Harry Potter, Micah Potter, Chamber of Secrets, Micah Potter, Horcrux, Micah Potter, Gringotts Bank, I'm busting them all out. And then he scores. And I said, Micah Potter. He who will not be named. And he's running by the scores table. He goes, enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough. I'm like, uh oh, uh oh. Now, I shouldn't have done what I did next. What I should have done was the opposite of what I did, did next. And I'm sorry to say that what I did next was I listened to him. I no longer referenced Harry Potter. And I'm like, I'm getting soft. Old EZ would have, I mean, I would not have stopped. But him yelling at me, enough, was enough. And then everybody was like laughing on the scorer's table. It was, it was great. The guy so did not roll with it. Uh, Ritz says, got to give him a new nickname, Micah the Golden Snitch Potter. Micah Potter, butthurt little bitch. Uh, Kenny says, Micah Potter, he freed 
Dobby. He even went so I went I even went so far as to try to um remember how Malfoy used to say Potter? He'd go, Potter. And so that that was part of it too. Micah Potter. Or I'd go, Potter? Potter. Uh, Rich says, you'd think G League players would have a better sense of humor. Oh, no. No, they don't. They don't at all. Call the others team announcers in the in the league and see if you can get them to play along with it also. Yeah, you know, um, announcing gigs have gotten me into trouble in the past. I, I, probably best that I left it alone, you know, if you think about it. Um, all right. Let's see thought i got a phone call earlier i did i got a phone call at 10 34 i should probably um return the co- the phone call you know somebody calls you you want to return it you don't want to you don't want to be rude oops mm-hmm that they didn't go on to bigger and better things for the day. Hello? Yeah, it's not going to work. Fortunately. This is the wonderful voicemail of President Trump. Let's make America great again together with your message. (laughs) All right, maybe, maybe you'll check back. Sorry, I got distracted. I just didn't want to be rude. You know how it is. Where are we going now? Hmm. Dad arrested after cops say he called 18 or 19 times in less than an hour to complain about his son's homework. Underneath it, it says, people make mistakes. The dad tells today.com. I oftentimes cringe when I see somebody made a mistake. When they say somebody made a mistake. I, the, the latest one was that coach of Michigan, that defensive, uh, that defensive coach who just got busted for uh, drunk driving. And uh, Sharon Moore, the coach of Michigan, said, yeah, he made a mistake. It's like, no, that's not a mistake. If, you, if, you, if it even happens once, it's not a mistake. It's a, it's a decision. He made a poor decision. And um, that's not a mistake. A mistake is... Uh, Today, when I was doing the radio show and I fucked up, I didn't have the button set the right way. That that was a mistake. Tophis says that's a choice. Patrick says he didn't make a mistake. He fucked up. Yeah, that's that's another way of saying you chose to be a drunk and drive around. This dad says, people make mistakes. Well, anyway, dad was arrested because he kept calling the school and then the cops to complain about the homework. Um, This is a kindergartner, I think. Well, it's a K through five school. Detective Sergeant Adam Price of the Oxford, Ohio Police Department said that the guy, Adam Sizemore, called the police 18 to 19 times in less than an hour. It was disruptive, says Price, adding, this is a K-5 through school, so there is not an abnormal amount of homework. Sizemore told Today.com in a voicemail that, quote, most of the accusations aren't true. Quote, I'm a sick... I'm a single dad of a boy and a girl and I'm just trying to do the best I can. And that's all I can do. 
Sizemore says. People make mistakes. Now, let's, let's back up there. Um, you may be a single dad, but what does that have to do with you being a fucking asshole? I'm a single dad of a boy and girl, and I'm just trying to do the best I can do, and that's all I can do. So are you suggesting that the best you can do is harass the school and the cops? That's the best you can do? After he says that's the best I can do, he then follows it with people make mistakes. So this is obviously a guy who is not going to take any uh, onus on this. He's not going to, he's going to blame everybody else. He's the victim here. Why in the world would this even happen in the first place? What could be so wrong that could cause all of this turmoil? According to the police report, Adam Sizemore repeatedly called Kramer Elementary School, quote, because his son gets homework, which takes away from the time he has with him after school. So I don't know if it's he just gets some of the parenting time or what. But dad doesn't like that the kid has to do homework. So he got upset about that. I mean, God forbid if you actually sat down with your kid and talked about his day and so what are we doing for homework and just kind of like uh stood over his shoulder and hung out with him while he did it just uh hey you're doing a great job there and just kind of um be somehow in tune with it without actually doing the work for him instead of like sequestering him off in a room actually participate in the process you asshole that's what normal people would do Sizemore was trying to reach the principal. The principal wasn't available. He uh, left a message on the principal's voicemail and then kept calling. Uh, during these messages, he was cursing at the secretaries while making demands of them. So he's all pissed off, taking it out on the lady who's answering the phone. Um, the cop who investigated said the guy, his speech was slurred and he asked Sizemore if he was drunk. Sizemore said he was high. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, that's not taking away time from your son though, right? What a loser. The cop wrote in the police report, Sizemore continued to curse at me and call me names such as bitch. He also told me he was going to make sure I lost my job. I explained to Sizemore that if he called again, I would file a telecommunications harassment charge on him. I ended up hanging out, hanging up on him. He called right back with the same behavior he was warned about. Two officers went to the asshole's home, but he did not answer the door. According to the report, when one officer returned to school, Sizemore was still calling. Can you believe this guy? The report stated that Sizemore eventually spoke to the principal, stating he did not want his son to have homework and started swearing at him too. Principal hung up on him. The next day, Sizemore resumed calling the school. Um, According to the principal, Sizemore said in a voicemail, I hope that you, the principal, put on your big boy pants today and have a conversation like a big boy. Murs told police that he was concerned that Sizemore would come to the school. That day, he made all the calls to the police. This is Adam Sizemore. In a uh, voicemail. You've got a a bit of an ass-chewing coming because of your employees, the ones I pay for. So if you could call me back. What a level of entitlement uh, of entitlement on this asshole. Dad continued to call the police. God damn it. You know, again, it's the same joke. But if this were a black guy, he'd have been shot in the face five times by now. They ended up filing the uh, telecommunications harassment on the guy, that charge. 
Uh, found guilty, he faces a maximum of a thousand dollar fine and up to six months in jail for each count of the telecommunications harassment. For the menacing charge, Sizemore faces a two hundred fifty dollar fine and up to thirty days in jail. My God, it's it's not uh, it's no secret why this guy is single. He's an absolute loser. The fact that any woman would um, uh, marry this guy in the first place and agree to have children with this piece of shit. God damn. Uh, dude was taken to the jail. Principal says that Sizemore is no longer in custody. Not Or the cop says that Sizemore is no longer in custody, although he could not confirm whether Sizemore made bond or was released by a judge. He has a court date coming up March 28th. Think back to all of the story, other things I've just told you about. All this shit happened because the kid had homework. That's where the, this guy managed to take a uh, elementary school homework assignment and wound up with thousands of dollars in fines and time in jail with potentially more time in jail over that. Oh my God. That is crazy. Chris says, but he's the one with custody. Stevie says, oh my God, Google that guy. He looks like a, he looks like a jack off. Yeah, I will. I already forgot his name. Uh, Is it Adam Sizemore? Uh, Yeah, Adam Sizemore. Oxford, Ohio. Hold on. Let's see if I can make this happen quickly as I can. All right. <laughs> All right. That's my man. That is my man. My God. How embarrassing. This is, I think, an image of the detainment right here. Well, the good thing is it's going to be going to be quick. All right. We'll go around the other side over here. Okay. This is him actually getting arrested. Hey, what I'm gonna do is probably use two sets since you're a big guy, all right? Since you're fat as fuck. Any more uncomfortable than you have to be, all right? I didn't break. Well, again, none of, none of the people you're looking at right now took that phone call. So well, they, who, who listened to it? Well, but you're gonna go meet that officer right now, okay? She's the one that took the report and is the charging officer, so she can explain more to you what's going on. I want to hear it. Okay. Let me double lock these real quick because when you sit, <laughs> sit in my car and they sent you down on your. I miss the days when cops would just fucking jack you in the fucking head. They're too nice now. On your wrist, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, this is bullshit. They they need to throw his fucking one set of, of uh, cuffs tight as fuck. Throw his fat fucking body in there so that his head hits the frame of the, the of the, uh, the body of the car. He's got cauliflower ear. He's bleeding from the ear. And then once he gets in there, stomp him a few times. Now they're like cool with him. Hey, yeah. I did it once when I was young. Oh, yeah, I gotta move all kinds of stuff. Yeah, this is a crock of shit. That's bad policing in my book. They need to kick that guy's ass right from the start. Tophus says what we all are thinking the same thing. If it was black, they would have smashed his head into the hood. If you're a black guy and you watch that, you're like, God damn it. Quit being so nice. Fuck him up. Jesus. Blue State Rob says he looks like Lonely Nick. 
Chris says no taser. How disappointing. Yeah, I don't, I, uh, I, I think our cops have gotten a little too soft. You know, just tighten it up a little bit. Don't answer any fucking questions. Joe Martinez says it's because he's a white guy. Wouldn't that have been awesome? We need a white guy to get his ass kicked. And that guy was actually asking for it. He was, he was asking for an ass kicking. <laughs> Rob writes, the cop probably averages one arrest a month because there's no black people in his jurisdiction. <laughs> All right. What an absolute disaster story that is. Fuck that guy. Okay. I got a, um, I heard from Chris, Chris K. I was very happy to hear from Chris. He sent me a a news story that we got to get to. And um, he wrote on it, is he okay? And I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. Father's head found inside cooking pot wrapped in saran wrap. What the fuck? Middletown Township, Pennsylvania brings us this story. What the hell? Uh, Bob, is that near you? Bob in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania? I don't know. It's a Pennsylvania is an enormous state. 32-year-old Pennsylvania man accused of uh, cutting dad's head off. He then drove to a military base to quote, try to mobilize the national guard after, um, he cut dad's head off. He then went on YouTube to break down his technique. After that, he went to the national guard to try to mobilize them. Before I get to that, Trump, uh, has called back. Let's see if we can get him on here and we'll finish with that. Playing phone tag with the president. Big Brad Zane, how are you doing, my friend? How's Q100 treating you? Is it wonderful? Is everything that you wanted? So far, so good, Mr. President. Thank you for asking. Well, I got to say, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you're broadcasting through our great, wonderful northern Michigan on a Q100. It's a tremendous place in the summertime, as Kid Rock has famously sang. And Big Fraud, I cannot wait to be on there with you. I think that's a tremendous opportunity to connect with our great patriots in our great northern state of Michigan. Also, Big Fraud, have oh, you wait. heard all this terrible news? Actually, this sir, I was, news I was gonna... They're going to seize my assets, Big Fraud. They're going through New York. The attorney general is so fraudulent. Right, so fraudulent. right. They want to seize my assets. It's terrible. If I weren't running for president, Big Fraud, and leading by a lot, but let me tell you, none of this legal lawfare would be going on it's total election interference well um a couple things uh yeah i i'm gonna have to have a conversation with you about that uh about q100 i'm so excited to be on q100 big front but listen i should not have put up any money being forced by this corrupt judge and the very terrible and nasty attorney general in new york until this uh, listen i put in for an appeal and they haven't listened to it yet by the way this is this is the most this is the most money owed, I believe, ever in any kind of lawsuit ever. This is insanity. I can't find an insurance company that'll that'll take this this on. This is absolutely insane. So, are you saying that all of that terrible news is uh, nearly outweighed by your thought that you will be on Q one hundred? Totally, Q one hundred well, is keeping me kind of afloat in some yeah, ways. I think it's I so don't, great. And of course, we've won. We've won great states recently. I don't, we've I don't won think that Arizona. We've won Kansas. We've wow, it's great. We've you won't Illinois. be on there. It's, ama- it's amazing. We they don't they don't want you on. Uh, 
never mind. I'll 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 talk about it later, sir. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, that's that's all very interesting. Uh, Q100 is awesome, but I'm you know with all this money that you'll owe, do you think you'll actually have to dig into your pocket and pay it? Well, of course, I've got the money. I've got the money. But what we need is an insurance. We need an insurance company to back the money. And no insurance company wants to back it. It's terrible, big fraud, because this is the most money owed in a legal lawsuit probably ever. They're saying it's the biggest witch hunt in our great country. Nobody is more persecuted, not even Harriet Tubman, if you think about it, <laughs> than your pal Donald Trump. So you're more persecuted than Harriet Tubman, the... Uh She's a woman who uh, started the Underground Railroad. Is that who you're comparing yourself to? I think I could compare myself to anyone. I think the Salem witch trial, all those women that died. I mean, I'm probably more persecuted than anyone ever on this entire planet, actually. I don't think I've ever it's heard. terrible because if I weren't running for president, none of this would be happening, big fraud. None of this would be happening. Okay. And you're telling me the attorney general basically wants to run Trump Tower in New York. That's what she's basically saying. She's a terrible, crooked woman. Very nasty, actually, what she is. And she wants to take over Trump Tower. It's terrible. I mean, she knows nothing about running running Trump Tower. It's a very big business. Very big business. Um, sir, th- this is all stuff that I haven't really been following. I think that you have been so in the news lately with different uh, different things going on legally that it all kind of is like white noise now. I don't think anybody's paying attention. Well, it's terrible. I'm not even paying attention to it because it's all fake news. It's fake news. Because if I weren't running for this, if I weren't running and winning so big, by the way, we've won so many states already in the polls show. The polls show that people are very tired of Biden and they're looking for me. They're looking for me to save the day and I'm going to save it so big. Believe me, we're going to save the country. We're going to do great things for this country. Okay. But this corrupt political hack in new york this judge and attorney general they want me to put up this massive amount of money before i'm allowed to appeal which is ridiculous i mean you should be able to appeal anything we all know that all the lawyers tell me that okay never never done before no jury no victim full disclaimer clause it's it's totally happy banks election yeah. interference it's a witch hunt big fraud uh so eight months till the election if you win you just wipe it all out you just say no nope, it none of that counts none of that well, totally. Totally. We could totally do that. We could do so much more, too. Wait till you see what we're going to do. Probably going to be the biggest thing you've ever seen because I'm, of course, America's favorite president. Right, no, right. Not more liked since Abraham Lincoln, if you think about it. But you're going to be a dictator day one. I'm thinking you might need to be a dictator for like the whole week because there's a lot that has to be done, sir, right? Well, I think we've we've got a lot to do. We've got so much we've got so much to do that we probably I mean day one might extend into I don't know, maybe a week. Or a year or four. It could totally. It could totally it could totally move to forever, actually, if you think about it. <laughs> so you would be the president for the rest of America. For as long yes, as it's course. a country. You would be the president. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a country anymore, but uh, I would say, I would say historically, historically, I mean, we've had great presidents, we've had terrible presidents, and we have the worst president probably ever right now. He's done terrible things to this country, terrible things to the economy and the border. Right. I mean, we, you and I have debated the border before, but it's terrible what's going on down there, and it needs to be cleaned up, and it needs to okay. be cleaned up so fast. And if if a dictator is what's needed to do that, then. Who am I to argue with, right. the, you with would, what's needed? You would be that dictator. You would you would actually dictate. You you want to be a uh, tating dick. Well, that's terrible, big fraud. I don't I don't I don't know what you're trying to say. It sounds very sexual, and I don't do that anymore. Okay, you're trying to be like a shock doc Howard Stern or something. You're like the poverty Howard Stern if you think about it. Which is terrible, actually, because I used to be on Howard Stern yep. all the time. Did you big know? ratings, big Howard ratings. And I, Howard and I used to be quite friendly, and now not so much, not so much. And he hasn't left his basement since COVID. He's not that different no. than Joe Biden. Sir, uh, Rob here in the chat writes, you pay your traffic ticket before you go to court if you choose to contest it. Such bullshit. They're doing the same thing to a former president. Um, I think what he's saying there is if you're contesting it, you wouldn't pay it beforehand. I think he was he was that. Well, that, let me that's tell he's, you, he's absolutely right. It's a disgrace what they're trying to pull, treating a former president like this. But you know what? 
They won't silence me. I'll keep fighting for what's right, and I won't back down. Okay. Just like I never back down from a challenge, I won't back down from this one. And I want to appreciate that great Patriots support because together we're going to make sure justice is served. These attorney generals will be taken care of. Now, see, we, whatever it takes, Big Fraud, we will take care of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that? absolutely. Absolutely. Now, and I also got an email from your assistant talking about scheduling you on Q100. I wanted to talk to you about that, sir. Well, that's going to be great. In fact, if you could talk with my assistant about getting me yeah. on Q100, that would be yeah, amazing. But first, I got to say, I got to say, my assistant's been following it. They don't want we you We got to make sure, we got to make sure before I go on that they you won't get all let... these kinks ironed out. I understand you're like leaving the desk for coffee and right, right. going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. can't have but, that with but Trump. They won't, they won't allow we you can't on. Have that. Listen, I got to go. We've got these. Sir. It's a very busy day, but you talk with my assistant yeah. and we'll get right on to Q100. Right. It's going to be yeah, fantastic but... because they've got probably the best rock music right. in all of I know you like it, but they... Q100 doesn't want anything to do with, with Trump on the air. Um, so I don't, and I, every time we bring that up, I can't, I can't get a word in edgewise. It's always like that. God, so goddamn annoying. All right. Um, a word from Joe Martinez, A and E heating and cooling. Reach out today and get on the schedule, uh, for AC tune up. Now I know I've been talking about this, but not every, if everybody would do this and this would just be a reminder, trust me, you all would be better off if you don't after each year's cooling season. Before you fire it up the next year, get that thing serviced. Um, at the least, you're wasting money on energy because that AC is going to work harder and it's shortening the life of your AC. At worst, if you uh, turn it on, God forbid, but a chipmunk's chewed on the wires and sparks are going to fly out of that fucker. Reach out. He's seen it happen. Reach out to Joe Martinez, 616-516-8579. If that happens, that's a costly repair that would have been avoided if you just spend the 79 bucks and had Joe tune up the AC. Well worth it. You see him twice a year, before the heating season and before the cooling season. 616-516-8579. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. 616-532-6600 if you have a regular combustion motor they got you covered if you have a hybrid they got you covered if you have an ev you're eventually going to hate that thing but if something goes wrong they can fix it 616-532-6600 for irvine's auto repair grand rapids hybrid and ev in grand rapids michigan ask about the free loaner car program uh, to get you to and fro while your vehicle is getting repaired uh green medicine shop for all of you consumers of cannabis maybe this weekend you make the trip up to greenville michigan drive into downtown it's a small two stoplight town and on the north side on the east side of the street so you head north and then you you can't miss it i don't know why i'm giving you directions like jimmy we have a phone we can it tells us how to get there, Eric. Uh, anyway, go to the Green Medicine Shop uh, for your cannabis products. Why easy would we go all that way when we've got a recreational facility right around the corner? Well, those are shit, okay? Uh, go to a clean shop with better cannabis. Less yeast, less mold, because it's medical grade. No excise tax on it. That means you save 10%, and you're supporting a sponsor with high quality cannabis from green medicine shop. If you don't have a medical card, you got to get one, get it from their website, thegreenmedicineshop.com. It costs 90 bucks to get one, but you got a $100 in-store credit when you, uh, when you sign up on their website. And that only takes you a handful of minutes. So buy your two and a half ounces from green medicine shop, go back home and smoke as much as you smoke. I don't smoke, but you do. And if you smoke, I want you to get your cannabis from Green Medicine Shop. Or perhaps you 
do the old edibles or just like the CBD products. They got it all at Green Medicine Shop. King's Room Barbershop, last but not least, I got to make a trip over to the immortal Andy Skyver, Andy and Colleen. Three locations for King's Room Barbershop. Men and women who like short hair get their hair cut at King's Room Barbershop. Three locations, Caledonia, Northland Drive, and at 821 36th Street in beautiful Wyoming, Michigan. Right down the street from Dumpster Divers. Uh, their website is kingsroom.net for hours, exact locations, and whatnot. Haircut's going to set you back 19 bucks plus tip. Uh, we are putting another Eric Zane Show podcast in the books. Your asshole of the day today is going to be that butt fuck asshole dad harassing the school and the cops over school age kids homework what an asshole he's earned that what a desperately fucked up fool uh i did not finish my story about is he okay uh the guy in uh somewhere in pennsylvania who tried to cook his dad's head i'll save it for the patreon Tophus says, honorable mention, the cops who didn't brain him. That is your asshole of the day today. Free podcast is in the books. Patreon is next. Join me by going to patreon.com slash Eric Zane for free. Check out the Patreon for podcasting every day. Okay. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.